So we're back over here in the Sefer on Bechira, on what it means to, for a person to have free will. And he writes over here, Brias Atzma, a person can actually create themselves. The Bechira's Brias Haratza and Yesh Mimir Amok Yesh. There's a very, very deep understanding over here, he writes, in what it means of Brias Haratza and the creation of will that Hashem has put inside everybody. A person can actually create themselves. What does that mean? It says in the creation of man, Hashem used a very interesting language. He's creating mankind. He does, he's done everything all by himself from the beginning of creation. He doesn't need anybody's input or help. But it says, Let us make man. Why does God say those words, let us make man? Is there somebody else with God? in the heavens that he's used, that's helping him create mankind? What does it mean, Na se Adam, let us make man? So he says, She tov she'elokim va'adam. There is a partnership between God and man. Shut vim b'yitzirasa she'la'adam. We become partners in the creation of man himself. Ala'adam li'ishtamish b'kaycha b'chira. A person needs to utilize their abilities of b'chira, of free will. Lahabi lashlamasa ishi is to bring about a completion to their to their essence to who they are. Ha'adam never built in Mushlam. A person was created imperfect. We're not complete. We're lacking certain things in our even in in who we are and what we're supposed to become. Hashem has given us the ability to continue Ulahashlim as Briyasai to continue and to complete and somewhat finalize our creation through the abilities that we have to use our free will. So when he says that when Hashem said, let's make man in our image, he was saying, I'm going to start the process. God's saying, I'm starting. But man's going to be a partner together with me. Because the only way that the person is going to be completed the only way he's going to reach a level of what's called shleimus of spiritual perfection is if he continues the job that I started. And that is, he must utilize his bechir, his free will, and make the right decisions in his life to continue refining and elevating and mastering himself. <clears throat> so it's, a, it's an amazing idea. HaGadosh Baruch made us incomplete on purpose, because he wants us to be the ones that are going to achieve our completeness and our totality in this world. And he, he invested that in our, <clears throat> in, in, inside of us. <laughs> the, the process begins with one's individual bechir, their free will. And it concludes with the full development of the person. So, HaKadosh Baruch Hu made us imperfect. There's a lot that we have to work on. Our job then is to get in tune with our Bechira, our abilities of free will, make the right choices so that we should continue working towards a greater sense of development and shleimus and completion. And then, hopefully, by the end of 120 years, we have accomplished full development of who we are supposed to be. We'll be safe in the end. At the end of the day, a person is an expression of this partnership of the will of our Creator, the will of God, and our own individual ruts and our will as well. And that's our, our, it's like it says in the Mishnah, try to make your will like the will of God. What is the will of God? The will of God is that we should, we should become as great as we could become, we should become as Muslim, as complete as we should become. How do we do that? Says, the, says Rabbi Tatz, the way you do it is by utilizing your Bechira, your free will, to continually be moving in that right direction. So he says there is a mitzvah livcha, there's actually a mitzvah that you are fulfilling when you make choices. Especially if you make the right choice, it's even a better mitzvah. But any time that a person is going to utilize this power of Bechir, of free will, you're getting a, you're getting a mitzvah. Says the, say he says, 
There's a famous work called Shai Tshuva. Rabbi Yehuda is one of the great Rishayim, one of the earliest commentaries, on par with Rashi, the Rambam, the Ramban. And the Rabbi Yehuda writes in his classical work Shai Tshuva, the Gates of Tshuva, of Repentance, as Mailais Mitzus Haasei. He's speaking over there. He's giving a long list of the positive commandments that we have to fulfill. The first mitzvah that he speaks about in the positive commandments is the mitzvah of Bechir, of free will, utilizing your free will, hopefully again for the right things. And he says, These great, lofty expressions are... They are given over to us. These are great expressions of Hashem. They're given over to us in the positive commandments. Come on, Mailas Habichira, like the the beauty of the the mitzvah bechira, free will. Shenema, like it says, ubecharta bechayim. It says, and you should choose life. Now, what does it mean that you should choose life? You choose to live. What does it mean to choose life? So the simple understanding is ubecharta bechayim. Choose life. Choose to live. If, you're, if the oncoming tra- traffic is coming and you have a mitzvah to live, so don't walk into the oncoming traffic. If you know that this food is not healthy for you, so then don't eat that food because you're choosing life. You want to live. If you know that exercise is a, is a good thing and your body's going to benefit and it's going to make you healthier, so then make sure you exercise because you're, you're choosing life. Is that what it means to choose life? Says, the, says Rabbi Tatz, Umam Shechashai Tshuva, so the Shai Tshuva, this, this work of Rabbeinu Yaina, which is the gates of repentance, he counts in the positive commandments the following. The first commandment is, the first commandment is to, to choose. He tamsis kola mitzvahs, and it's the essence, it's the essence of all of, it's the essence of all of the mitzvahs. The essence you can use your bechir very well. <laughs> the essence of the essence of all of the mitzvahs is the abil- is the ability to choose. He beetsem shoresh hamusak It's it's in reality it's the root of the goal of all of the mitzvah that we have. Even before a person chooses what is right and what is proper. The first thing that a person has to do is to become a baycha, someone that knows how to choose and make decisions. Before you will choose right or wrong, you have to develop inside of you this understanding or an awareness that you are a baycha, that you are someone that even has the ability to choose. Meaning, if a person is going to say, well, I had no choice, that's not true. Person, person always, a person always has a choice. Okay, let's see. Okay, so he says like this. So he says, "Ten kiyama mitzvahs chayev is lava achlata lebate es arat." So before you can even keep all of the other mitzvot that we have in the Torah, there has you have to come to a a, a distinct expression of what the will is inside of you. He'll explain. This means that the mitzvah of choose life. It, it means that in the beginning, choose. And choose meaning the idea of being a person of free will. What does it mean, choose life? Choose to be someone who knows that you have responsibility to make decisions. Choose to be a person, not that you're choosing life to live, but choose to be someone that's accepting upon themselves the obligation to make choices in their life. And therefore, when free will will be exercised in the right way, then you have chosen life. Because when a person chooses, that's really what life is all about itself. Meaning, he's defining over here. How do you know that you're really alive? How do you know that you're utilizing your strengths? How do you know that you're reaching a level of shlemas of perfection? When you are choosing, 
Again, hopefully you're choosing the right thing over the wrong thing. So when you are choosing, so then that's when you know that you're alive. If a person says, well, I had no choice, or that's just what I do, or I'm an automatic pilot man, I just, that's, I've been living like this for 5, 10, 15, 20, 65, 100 years, so that's what I do. So then that's not life, that's, that's called stagnation. That's just doing whatever you do. When a person is choosing, that's when they are truly alive. So the goal is not just to live. Anybody can live. Rather, I want to live through choice. And that means that the, the root or the, um, the, the, the source of, of, of the source of this aspect of life that we're describing over here is, is that I'm going to live through my ability to be baycher, my ability to choose. So it's a heightened level of existence where I'm not just alive and kicking, I'm actually alive and choosing. And the choosing itself, he says, is what brings a person to the greatest feelings of the expression of, of life. So just to conclude, he writes, in the Torah, Whenever we find like a, a novel event that is taking place, we'll always find in the Torah when something outstanding is about to happen, it always is preceded by the Torah pointing out that whoever is doing this particular thing got there because he made a decision to do that particular thing. He used his Bechir as free will. Like he says, Vayisa Avram es Vayar. Avram lifted up his eyes, it's talking about after three days after he had his bris mila. He's sitting by the tent outside, he's looking for, uh, for a passerby so he can do the mitzvah of, of taking care of, of guests. And it says over there, Vayisa Avram, Avram lifted up his eyes, Vayar, and then he saw the people that were there. Vayisa Yaakov Raglov Vayelech. Yaakov got his famous prophecy of the ladder. And Hashem told him, you're going to go, young man. You're on the run, and you have, to, you have a lot you have to accomplish in your life. So Vayisa Yaakov, Yaakov lifted up his legs himself. Vayelech, and then he went. Ain't Avram Ra. It wouldn't be enough that if Avram just saw the three angels or the three wayfarers coming his way. A person could see without doing anything. I'm looking around the room right now. I'm not doing anything. Just looking around the room. You're driving down the street and you see an accident take place. God forbid in front of you. You didn't, you didn't actively go to this. It just happened in front of you. Avram could have just sat there by the, by the outside of his tent. And he could have just waited until somebody would have come. And then he would have looked and he would have seen that there's people there. But no, the Torah wants to tell us without any decision-making process. That the, that the Torah is telling us before Avram saw anything, he chose to see what was coming. He is the Torah is expressing that Avram Avinu wanted to choose over here to see something that would come his way. That's what brought him to be able to see. Avram Avinu said, oh, let me lift up my eyes, let me get involved over here and see what I could see, and then he's able to see. Whenever you want to build something new in this world, or in the Torah, whenever the Torah is introducing something new, the Torah speaks in a way as a bechira haritzainis. It's a deliberate choice that was being made that brings about the next stage in that process. So if a person ever wants to accomplish anything, they want to shift or to change or to grow or to move or to do something, they have to make a decision in the beginning and then the rest, God willing, will follow suit. Okay, we'll stop here for today.